Let's take a moment to appreciate an unglamorous but absolutely pivotal figure in Fastenal's history, the fastener keg. Back in the early years, we would save money on furnishings by using fastener kegs as chairs. And because we saved on things like that, we were able to pour every penny into growing the business, including buying more and more fastener kegs. Before long, we had a three-year supply of certain items sitting in our store basement and garages. Then it occurred to us that we could use all that inventory to open additional stores without spending a lot of money. That was a real turning point in our business model. Our first store outside of Winona was Rochester, Minnesota, followed by La Crosse, Wisconsin, Dubuque, Iowa, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and a sprinkling of other locations in the area. That said, as you can see in this photo of our company meeting in 1977, we were still a pretty small operation. To clarify, this isn't just a random group shop from the event. This was the entire company at the time, all 10 of us. It took a few more years to really hit our stride as an organization. And it was really thanks to the resourcefulness of the people in our stores and their ability to provide great service without spending a lot of money. Long distance calls were always made before 8 a.m. to cut down on phone bills. The Winona headquarters was known as the 55 Club because in the dead of winter, the thermostat was set to a refreshing 55 degrees. And if you walked into a fastenal store in the 1980s, you probably would have thought we were in the toothpaste business because all of our orders were packed in surplus Ipana toothpaste boxes, which we picked up for three cents a piece. Fresh, clean, and minty, you'll like it. New Ipana toothpaste. We saw the same kind of ingenuity when it came to meeting our customers' needs. Anchors, threaded rod, duct tape, marking paints. These and countless other now commonplace items began with a single customer inquiry. We discovered that many of our personnel had the ability to oversee multiple stores and help grow the business in an entire state or area. These young leaders had talent, ambition, and most important of all, mustaches. Lots and lots of mustaches. Driven by our belief in people and what they could accomplish, by the mid-1980s, Fastenal had grown to roughly 50 stores. But we were faced with a couple of challenges. One was that we didn't have enough cash flow to fully leverage our purchasing and grow the company at full throttle. The other was that we wanted to find a way to give employees an ownership stake in the company they were helping to build. Making Fastenal Public Company would take care of both issues. So my fellow co-founder, Steve Sloggy, started testing the waters to see if we could find a firm willing to help us out with an IPO an initial public offering of stock. How'd that go, Steve? We got more than turned down. Um, they weren't very nice to me. Well, I had a relationship with another broker in town, and uh, he said, well, maybe our firm would take a look at it, Robert W. Baird in Milwaukee. And we presented our stuff, had lunch, and they didn't ho-hum, but said, this is kind of interesting, and we'll let you know. So we're back home, and the next day, or at least no more than two days, an aircraft appears at the Winona Airport. A prop. We don't get many private aircraft in Winona. It was the people from Robert Baird. and They came to the company and said, we'd like to take you public. Well, you scrape Bob and I off the floor. I said, you will? Of the 1 million shares sold during our initial public offering, more than 285,000 were sold to create a charitable education foundation. Another 100,000 shares were allocated for purchase by our 252 employees. The total value of the IPO was only $9 million, but people who invested in our company had to be happy with the results. In fact, at the end of 1987, the Wall Street Journal ranked all 500 IPOs held during the year in terms of return on investment. And there, at number one, was little old Fastenal. The capital raised by the IPO set the stage for remarkable growth. Fastenal's sales soared from roughly $20 million in 1987 to around $400 million in 1997, a 20-fold increase. And Fastenal's store count, which stood at 52 at the time of the IPOs, surpassed 800 by the end of the 1990s. 
The big blue machine had been set into motion and we've been barreling along pretty nicely ever since.